Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to EUS Challenger Series number 10 with Copenhagen Wolves and Smart People in the second game of the best of five we have today with the grand final. And first game went to Wolves fairly comfortably. We'll see if Smart People can go with a different um, play style as they did last time. We go less towards the team fights and more towards the split pushing and counter engagement. Maybe the wave clear installing. Unlimited pulling down the wards immediately. But I am Pulse and I'm joined by Spunnington. How's it going? It's going pretty well right now. We've got Sona actually warding out here, and both sides there, both supports, playing a little bit kind of liberally with their lives there. They didn't really have much vision on the enemy team, and were clearly just thinking, well, nobody would stack all their members in that one brush to catch out a, a lone support warding. But as it happens, they got away with it on both sides there, so uh, could be worse, and it will force Rydal to waste his pink ward? No, it didn't. It didn't. I thought that for some for a second, because they took a second to kill it. I thought they were like, we can't see it because of angles. Very possible. Sometimes in League of Legends you get very odd angles and for some reason wars are just stealthed when they shouldn't be. But in this case, it was not the case. So, Reckless along with the rest of the team moving up to the red buff. Looks like they are going to be starting up there uh, this time. And it's interesting because last time we saw the invade from Copenhagen Wars, of course the fact that they were um, actually there when Nami went to put down the ward meant that they didn't actually go all in. So this time, going to go for a more conservative start, just pick up the uh, double buff. And the fact he's starting red buff might uh, imply he's looking for a gank on the mid or bot lane after he's done with both of those. It's also possible he could go for a very aggressive early gank here. I'd be, like, at level two. Shen is actually very, very squishy. He's got this door and shield right now, and he wouldn't need much to force him completely out of lane. I mean, I know that level 2 ganks are very much frowned upon in the current meta, but I actually think in this situation it could have been good. Regardless though, Reckless will be farming this out. And I want to talk about the 2v1 swaps just briefly, because I feel this is going to favour Copenhagen Wolves. Yes, Ezreal isn't going to have to deal with Varus in the lane, but this is going to be a much faster pushing lane. Varus, with that piercing arrow, with that hail of arrows, will just shove and shove and shove. Whereas Ezreal, very much more single target focused, won't have his way clear till he gets his ult. Yeah, last game though we also saw the swap up from Copenhagen Wars and they got shut down. So we might see a repeat of that. Again, it didn't matter because of the stellar team fighting. Atratos just farming up his rapes. Hasn't moved on to a second buff yet. Moving straight around with Shuck around the corner. Flacker Drug actually whiffs and extra flashes anyway. Mind games. He is a genius right there. That that is that is some <laughs> genius uh. stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's gonna be pretty much a windfall. Uh, Exter actually starting with that Doran's ring, so a little bit of a kind of brave start. I've got to be honest, up against that Jarvan jungle, that's uh, yeah, that's that's kind of asking to get killed. But uh, Carthus, well, he will have that range for farming, and so long as he doesn't let himself either get pushed into his own tower or push up to his enemy's tower, he should be okay. That does require some pretty detailed lane control, but uh, what else would you expect from such good teams? Yes, indeed. And I'm looking at the bot lane right now. Zach has fairly decent wave clear with uh, the stretching strike, which he generally likes and max in that laning scenario. Samex and Rydal be trying to push down the tower as fast as possible. Ezra's fairly decent at sieging because the extra uh, the extra attack speed he gets from his essence flux, but we may not even put any points into that anyway. We do see Ezra's nowadays not even bothering with a point in that because it is just essentially extra damage. And uh, in the sieging, when you get to mid game and late game, is very valuable, but. You might choose to put a point in just for the uh, early laning phase because we are in this swap up. And it's Shuck flagger dragging over the wall. Not sure if he was sort of uh, seen by that ward, but apparently not. No pings have gone down. Samix and Rydal still quite overextended. Waiting for this mini wave to hit the turret. Youngbook goes in with the slingshot. Rydal flashes out. Another flash to follow with Shuck. He wants to land the auto attack, but doesn't quite connect it. Moving himself onto Samix. Still has the flash, still has the barrier. And Youngbook probably actually uh, didn't win out in that trade, dropping very low indeed. Only has a Doran shield and no other forms of sustain. Yeah, very well, other than his passive, which is too passive, but he will have that, uh, those Bloblets, which are more valuable when you're on low HP, but he has to be very careful not to get blown up. But that was actually a very, very good flash there by Rydal. He was so quick off the mark, essentially, at flashing when Jarvan came in, he did not get that red buff applied. And if that red buff had been applied, I think he would have always been guaranteed to die. Artatrust in the top lane taking a lot of damage now. Jerome looking for that taunt but doesn't get it. And uh, the Spirit Fire will continue to do the wave clear. Artatrust is going to have to back though shortly. Yeah, Drum just responding with the Shadow Dash kind of just to push them back. But the Artatrust will have to recall. Meanwhile, bot lane flashing up red will be Youngbuck. And he's in a very precarious position. 
Probably won't be able to focus the bubble that's underneath the tower, but the six link shot comes down, immediately gets popped into his passive, and now Shook just picks up the pieces in, in the form of the farm. Meanwhile, top lane, Ignite comes down to Zerom, and it's just action in both of these duo, uh, in both of these duo lanes versus the solo lanes. Yeah, now Young Buck has actually got about half of his health back, so that may almost be worth it from his perspective to have been popped like that. I don't think he was intending for it. He actually slightly was too short with that elastic slingshot, didn't get the knock up on the Ezreal, which meant that they could just turn around and blow him up. So uh, a little bit unfortunate for him, but uh, the, the, at the moment it's definitely going, well, pretty much as, as predicted, the, the top tower that's being pushed is being pushed a lot harder and a lot faster. Reckless will probably look to go back shortly, but, uh, well, it's not looking brilliant, once again, for smart people. Yeah, Youngbook is, uh, doesn't have the safety of his cell division right now, so if they do try and take him out very quickly underneath turret, just poke him down and go for something similar, then it will stick and he will die. And Shuck, once again, looking for another gank to happen, does not have the red buff, doesn't have the blue buff. In fact, just sticks around, making it two versus two, and, and instead he's going to hold the tower, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, well, Nasus has been doing a lot of babysitting, and Shuck getting aggressive there, goes in with the flag and drag. I'm not sure if that will okay. work out for him, but regardless, this is actually going to mean they've got a brief window now to put some serious damage on the tower, because Shook committed most of his cooldown. Samak's actually in a lot of trouble. Arcane shifts out, but the Ignite is down, Requiem is down, and that is Shook going down face first into the floor and again that's going to give another little opportunity to push this tower yeah it, it was i think samix also um, auto attacked him by mistake and then he capitalized on it but the amount of damage they could output especially with sona being such a, a bursty support then it worked out really well for them but in the mid lane we haven't really paid too much attention to it because it's generally just been a farming frenzy i think carps has been maybe taking some of the side camps as well but so far, again, not too much of a difference, but the extra kill on Carthus might open up the ability to get a little bit more aggressive in the mid lane, but that's not his main objective right now. Kind of interesting, the bot tower did not completely uh, completely fall, the Requiem came down, but Shuck kind of fulfilled his job in the sense that the tower didn't fall, and probably the top tower will fall earlier. So it's kind of a question of, d will they take it before the bot tower falls so they can swap up, or uh, will they not take it and both the towers just fall simultaneously and then you just have no towers? Well, it's worth noting that there's always like a little window. If, if for instance, Reckless and Unlimited were to take this top tower on the next wave, there'd still probably be, you know, another minute and a half, maybe even two minutes before they could properly get themselves rotated around, get down to that bot lane, you know, have bot bought all their items and get everything set up. So, so long as you can take out your, your opposing tower before the, their, their bot lane then rotates down, it actually will work out okay. And Spirit Fire is actually doing so much work right now in this essentially 2v2 lane, but Shook there, hanging around, they smell to rat, they're gonna be running for it. It should be okay. The question now is how well Young Buck can hold this bottom. Yeah, this is a very interesting point in time, because he's gonna have to try and hold this tower before his bot lane gets there, but finally it looks like the tower's just going to fall, so both towers fall, top and bottom. So now, in fact, the uh, duo lane from uh, Wolves actually stay in the top lane to see if they can maybe put some damage onto the next turret as well. They have the warding covered from it, because it is the duo lane, support will be warding. And probably the, the lane from smart people won't be able to apply the same pressure. In fact, they are going to swap and it looks like they're going to put the duo lane in bot lane anyway. Atrato's on that red buff, finds themselves shook and they will be trading off, but the duo lane is reacting. Steals it as well with the smite. This is exactly what he needs as long as he gets out without any damage and the bot lane reacting and he should be good to go and shook. Successful steal. Yeah, it was just nicely done. It was an out smite because he used that dragon uh, dragon strike there to get a little bit of extra burst damage and then smited on the instant the damage resolved. So uh, a little bit unfortunate there for the team from uh, smart people, but it's not going to be too big of a deal. Nasus isn't horrendously dependent on his red buff for that uh, ganking, but uh, Varus in this bottom lane now. It's going to be Young Buck trying to get aggressive, but I don't really think much is going to happen, but actually I'm dead wrong because now we have Chain of Corruption. Stan United coming in on Sona. Tidal Wave across from the side, and Samak's putting a bit of damage on Young Buck. Looks like they're just going to kind of cancel each other and look to back out. Artatros is hanging around bot. Jarvan is heading back towards mid. Yeah, that had the potential to go ugly very quickly with almost the entirety of both teams and all the lineups collapsing on bot lane. The disengage coming in from smart people kept themselves alive, and 
you have to feel that might set the pace for the rest of the game. Like, if they can carry on getting these good disengages down, then Wolves will never quite get the, uh, the engagements they want. They are, however, pushing down the spot lane, and Shook has stayed around, so it will be a 3 versus 2, but Atratos moving very quickly back from base. Uh, very quickly indeed, in fact, he's picked up the mobility boots, so it's a very fast dog. And Shuck moving on to counter jungle once again, very little that Nasus can do. And uh, Exa tries his best to steal, but just putting some damage in return. Meanwhile on the bot lane, Atratos may be looking for this gank to happen. He will have to probably lane gank, because that is uh, currently Wards, but just going to clear that one up. And get himself another Q stack, which is deadly more important. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah he's, he's a Greyhound, um, which kind of goes with his skin actually, but has yeah. looped around, so maybe looking clear out these golems and then maybe go for that lane gang. He has shown himself on any wards and in the mid lane, Exila getting that kill on Karthus and no rage ultimate here. He's got the cooldown and by the time the gank happens at bot, we can expect to see that be uh, potentially used, but it looks like Reckless Limited uh, once again, smelling that something could be up with that. So they are backing out, looking towards that dragon and will probably be able to take that more or less uncontested. Shook might be in a little bit of an awkward spot if they all converged, but they just don't. Yep, got the kill in Karthus, straight converting that into a dragon, and we saw this in the first game, they picked three dragons on the bounce before uh, before smart people even picked up one themselves. So, it might be a repeat of the first game, but the fact that they now have good disengage and they have decent split push potential with Shen, we'll see how this turns out for them. I mean, the pushing right now is slightly stronger for Wolves because Reckless is just stronger than Ezreal uh, at, the, at this point in the game. And it's just a matter of can they hold on until a couple more minutes when they can kind of group up and then, as you said, you have uh, you have Nasus there and you have Carpus there and they can just delete those waves super, super quickly. And I think a lot of this game is actually going to come down to how well Shen can duel Zack. Because if Youngbug is able to just keep uh, keep Shen pressed up against his tower continually and prevent him from using that ultimate whenever he tries, that's going to be really, really bad. Because they, the whole strategy right now uh, from smart people is to create timing windows and using that split push Shen. But if he's not able to make that happen, if he's not able to move around as he wants, going to be really, really bad because they just don't have a lot of other options available to them. I mean, Karthus will farm himself up into a late game beast, that is true, but uh, they so will Varus. As it happens though, at the moment, well, you can't really tell who's going to become the stronger duelist because they're both just so beefy at the moment, neither of them can really damage the other. Youngbook does have some wave clear, I guess, over Jerem, but uh, well, that giant spell, it's going to be who gets Sunfire Cape first, let's face it. Yeah, and it might come to the position where they just cancel each other out, where they both get tanky enough that neither of them can kill each other, but they can still both way clear. And uh, Zack also has the ability to interrupt the teleport if Jerome tries to use it in the form of Slingshot or his ultimate as well, Let's Bounce. So he might just stick himself up there, and they still have a form of engage from Shuck as well, so they can still go for these team fights even if they just use Zack to cancel on Shen. And that probably still works out for Copenhagen Wolves in the long run. So right now, uh, looks like Hatcher says he's trying to keep hold of his buffs and Shen also came down to offer some assistance. I think they think they're safe, but they are, they're actually not because Flack goes over the wall. Again, Shuck looking for this still to happen, but with no vision currently, they will be picking up and actually forces the smite from Atratos, so Exeter does uh, not have that blue buff, which is, well, it's a, it's a minor victory uh, for Copenhagen Wolves. The fact that it's not on uh, Karthus means they have slightly less wave clearing. It will hurt him just for the immediate future. Yeah, it's also going to mean he's going to be a little bit slower to farm up that tier. And now the pressure is coming down in the mid lane. Wall of Pain goes down. Exeter has been charmed. They could go for that, but Exeter opts not to pop the Spirit Rush. Not sure about that, but it's going to work out okay. There was also that Stand United threat, I suppose. Yeah, and the tower had just enough HP where they'd have to commit like a, you know, a couple seconds to that. And plus the fact that Crescendo was still up, but they are going to go for the initiate. Three after the sands comes down, great Crescendo comes out. Two versus three, but the Sand United comes in. <laughs> Ezreal across the map, Ezreal ultimate in fact. And Limited gets caught away from his team and will be immediately picked up. Raptors in the meanwhile picks up the tower down the bot lane while well, that was all happening. One for zero, but uh, a talent in return. Yeah, 150 farm right now on Varus, so uh, we're getting a little bit ahead of that Ezreal, but they're both fairly competent duelist characters right now, so both of them are content to just kind of farm up against each other one-on-one -on -one in that bottom lane without their supports who will just be kind of rimming around and making sure that stuff is going their way. 
So uh, now it's going to be a question, I think, of when that next dragon pops up where Shen is at that time because like I say Shen is going to be the most important thing right now in this whole game because he was the one who will dictate the pace of uh, smart people's gameplay if he is in the right place at the right time if he is pushing out the right lanes at the right time with that capability to then ult down that will be very very key when that dragon pops up if he's got that ultimate and he's also got top lane pushed out that's going to force the bad the you know the lose-lose situation young buck now needs to take this opportunity to push out and make sure that jerem can't just sit in that top lane he's actually trading in a bunch of millions and coming out on top so uh, young buck demonstrating how strong he is right now um, so uh, yeah when that dragon pops up going to be important as to how shen is doing at that time yeah, Ashwato is also setting up there as well. In fact, he's just going to take the position of farming the top lane, which uh, Nasus is always going to be happy about. And as you said, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this turns out, because Exxon has gone for the classic death fire into Abyssal, so we'll be looking for that early game aggression and the picking potential. Also synergizes really well with Zac because he will have the extra damage over time, but the Abyssal mostly benefiting himself. Again, helps with the picking potential, but there's always the potential for Zeron to use the Stand United. True Shot Barrage comes across, and Atratos finds himself excellent, forcing the Spirit Rush down, which is actually fairly key. Jumping through, putting some more damage out, though. Deathfire Grass comes out, along with the Charm, lands at max range, along with the Fox Spies, picks up the kill. Very protracted. I didn't actually think he was going to pick that up um, after that such a long chase, but the kill goes down, 1 and 0. It's now down to Wolves to see what they can do with the kill. Yeah, and I don't think Ardatros expected to die either because he had Ghost that whole time. He <laughs> it at the end when it was already too late. So very, very unfortunate play there. That's going to waste his cooldown. But uh, Exila will have that ultimate and they do have good counter engage. As I've mentioned, however, Copenhagen Wolves are very strong right now. Zack is very tanky. They do have that potential to go for the dive, but it could backfire if they do. Crescendo is up. Requiem is up. Sam United is not up but they have so much potential damage if people go for that dive, and they also have the lockup. But this has given them the timing on the dragon. They're going to probably pick that up when it spawns, and then I suspect they will just go back, keep their towers defended, and maybe look to push out that bot at the same time. Artentros, though, could get caught here. Yeah, about 10 seconds on the timer for a dragon, but they might look for the initiate before that. Two sources of the initiation. Elastic Slingshot gets launched straight onto Exeter. Looking to take him up before he jumps into the middle of the team. That's already happened. In fact, he does drop, but everyone splits from Wolves, and they might be able to just reclaim some more kills. Also, it comes down with the, in the form of the Requiem. Doesn't reclaim any kills just yet. Double kill comes out for Young Buck, and now Zrom is the last man standing. Can he get a kill out? In fact, he just tries to run away, but slowed so heavily by that team. Ace comes down, five for one. Solid snake initiation by Shook. He, he, I mean, he was stood almost right next to uh, to the team of of uh, of, uh, yeah, of smart people whose name I cannot remember because in my head they're still giants, but I know they're not giants yeah. now. Yeah, they're ex giants, the but they're smart people. Yeah, it's really confusing because we, we often cast teams who still have the tags of the previous team and then sometimes they'll have like multiple tags like Copenhagen Wolves and Fnatic on the same team and you get really confused and so sometimes like Mr. Bobby I think had like three different teams in it and then the entire team name was something completely different. So yeah, sometimes very difficult to uh, keep track of. I use post-it notes. And right now, Copenhagen Wolves in a good position, proving that they can still win out on those team fights. And it always just... As we said, they have superior team fighting potential, not just with the, te um, with the team fight and composition they've gone for, but mechanically they're really, really strong. And we said this in Champion Selects, and I, I made a point of it earlier that I don't even know if the team of smart people want to go for these team fights. And I don't think they're quite at the position of where they can split push. So they're in this lose lose situation where Shen is too far behind Zack, so he can't actually trade with him and push. Meanwhile, the top laner, Atratos, finds himself wrecked along with Zrom. This might be another pick. This might be a tower, and this will maybe put Zrom back in the standings. Another kill will help him significantly, but not quite enough to catch up with Zack just yet. And uh, I think this is the most I've ever seen Reckless die in a series. Ha! <laughs> Well, maybe so, but both games he's been playing zero is zero escape carries, yeah, so not so surprising that he's died a lot. Uh, to Ezreal is going to push out this bottom lane right now. He does actually need to be a little bit careful. Young Buck might be able to pursue him if he can get on him with that let's bounce with the ulti and could take him down too. But in the top lane, Unlimited throwing out the tidal wave, using the empowered auto attack, and they will take the tower. However, Shook is in. Artatros has popped Fury of the Sands. He will be backing out, but the Cataclysm is down, locking himself in, and Jerem is just 
kind of wandering off. I, I don't know where he's off to. But regardless, he's going to go on holiday, and Nasus is going to run for his life. We'll get taken down by Shook in the long run. Um, he's in a bit of an awkward spot, though, now, <laughs> Shen. going to be running through the enemy jungle and actually maybe looking for some kind of... I don't, I don't really know. Where are you going? Going on a magical adventure. Flashy over the wall. He might get out of this alive. Essa on hot pursuit, though. And with the spirit brush comes down, immediately just evaporates Sona. Essa now drops as well. And Zerob just leads everyone, an angry pack of wolves, straight into his team. Oh, that was so disappointing. But it's fine, because Zerob gets out alive. Yes, although now he's... <laughs> he's over... I don't... What are you... Oh, the surrender vote. Well, we're on ever. Jerem went on his holiday, and then the team surrendered. So, uh, again, a convincing win from Copenhagen Wolves. Maybe, actually, though, um, smart people getting a little bit demoralized at this point, because that was much less of a goal lead than the previous game where they surrendered. So, uh, this wouldn't be the first time that we'd seen Copenhagen Wolves demoralize a team into kind of almost giving up before the game had started in their third game in the finals against them. Regardless, we will see how this works out. It will be at least one more game, depending. Uh, but we will go into a quick break while we get all the players in the lobby. So see you after this.